This is Autofocus, the Philippines' premier motor show. Here are our features on this episode of Electronic Magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. An MPV from Toyota, the Avanza GCVT, and a crossover from Mini, the Countryman Cooper S. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two subcompact SUVs, the Honda HRV V-Turbo CVT against the Hyundai Creta GLS IVT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about understanding your car's handling. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the all-new Kia Seltos Media Drive as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this episode of Electronic Magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Toyota. This car review takes a look at the top-of-the-line entry of Toyota in the subcompact MPV segment, the 7-seater Avanza G CVT. Toyota Motor Philippines has been dominating the local automotive sector by offering the most comprehensive lineup of vehicles encompassing all segments from passenger sedans and hatchbacks to MPVs, SUVs, and crossovers, to pickups and vans and other light commercial vehicles. Toyota also relies on a reputation for rolling out competent, reliable, and affordable vehicles that meet the needs and wants of car buyers. But in the face of the increasing number of competing brands in all segments, some of which are offering ever more advanced automotive tech as well as eye-catching styling, even in the lower end of the budget spectrum, Toyota needs to step up its game. This may be especially true in the subcompact MPV segment, which has seen the rise of very affordable new entries from China, along with more competitive models from other Japanese and Korean brands. In this segment, Toyota offers the Avanza, a 7-seater MPV now in its third generation of development and upgraded to command a bigger slice of the market. Atop the line is the Avanza GCVT, which arrived looking bigger than its predecessor at 4,395 mm long, 1,730 mm wide, and 1,700 mm tall. It clears the ground by 190 mm rolling on 16-inch alloy wheels wrapped in 195-60 R16 tires. The third generation of Anza looks as contemporary as other latest generation Toyota crossovers, including the Rays, which shares the same DNGA unibody platform. The slim split type LED headlights, the large and deep black trapezoidal grille, the character lines on the side all help to project a sleek modern look. Toyota also equipped the Avanza G with LED clearance lamp, front fog lamps, side view mirrors that power adjust and fold and feature turn lights. LED rear combination lamps with reflectors, intermittent front and rear wipers, rear spoiler, high mount stop lamp, and fin type antenna. The Avanza G CVT comes with keyless entry and push button start. The cabin is now much roomier than its predecessor. Two tone fabric upholstery makes it homey despite the carbon fiber accents. Both front seats slide and recline while the second row seat for three slide, recline, and tumble to provide what Toyota calls long sofa mode. That means it tumbles flat. The third row seat for two also tumbles flat to provide the same long sofa mode. The instrument cluster features a 4.2-inch TFT multi-information display between the circular speedometer and tachometer. The steering wheel comes in plain urethane, but it tilts and telescopes and features switches for the audio and multi-information display in the Avanza GCVT. The shift tray at the top of the line of Anza is also plain urethane, but features sequential shift function. 
All of Odds of variants come with power windows, power speed sensing door locks, air conditioning with digital controls in the front console and manual controls for the rear vents. Infotainment and connectivity at the top of the line of Anza come with 8-inch audio display system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, AM FM radio, Bluetooth and USB portal, and four speakers. The Avanza GCVT is powered by a 2NRVE 1496cc engine that makes out 106 PS at 6000 RPM and 138 Newton meters at 4200 RPM. Power and torque are set to the front wheels via a continuously variable transmission. Those numbers should prove adequate for problem-free driving in stop-and-go traffic in the city, but maybe not for fun driving in the countryside. Judicious use of the sequential shifter may be needed for steep uphill climbs when carrying a full load of seven. The third generation of Oz has vastly improved ride and comfort compared to its predecessor, owing perhaps to its new unibody construction and the tuning of the suspension system featuring the front McPherson strut and rear torsion beam combo. Reliable stopping power comes from a brake system featuring front ventilated discs and rear drums. Toyota equipped all three of Anza variants with anti-lock brake system and vehicle stability control with traction control, hill start assist, three-point ELR seat belts for seven, with driver and front passenger getting pre-tensioner and force limiter, ISOFIX child restraint system, and dual airbags. The Avanza GCVT shares with a mid-priced ECVT and EMT, back camera and rear sonar as well as a Toyota vehicle security system with alarm and immobilizer. The top-of-the-line Avanza is also equipped with blind spot monitoring and rear cross-traffic alerts, as well as side and curtain shield airbags. The Toyota Avanza 1.5G CVT is listed at 1.059 million. Does it have enough features and performance to compete at that price in the segment? We'll have to see how well it does against the competition at the end of the year. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Into new heights. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. launching the 8th generation of the BMW 5 Series in two variants, no? the 520i ICE with the 48 volt mild hybrid and fully electric i5 eDrive 40 that you have here. These are the two versions of the 5 Series that we're launching here. i5 eDrive 40 there's the same timeline with the 520i ICE which you have. There's a myriad of options, driving assistance systems, it also features the connected drive and other interior and exterior appointments which gives the car a more dynamic and comfortable as well as elegant experience in your day-to-day -day drive. The interior, it includes this very special upholstery which we call Veganza. As you can see later with the design, it has quilting and perforations which makes the car more elegant and sporty at the same time. The i5 eDrive 40 is the first ever electric vehicle of BMW, capable of 340 horsepower and 430 newton meters of torque, 0 to 100 in just 60 seconds, and has a range of 582 kilometers. The 520i is the successor of the previous 520i luxury line and M Sport spec that we had previously. 
in the G30 iteration. You have a 12% increase in horsepower and torque. Car being able to do 208 horsepower and 330 newton meters of torque. Price of this is uh, 520i will be 4.99 million and the i5 will be 5.79 million. Please visit our showroom. 520i is available across all showrooms in the Philippines. BMW i5 is available at our i, I dealerships. That will be BMW Libis, BMW Green Hills, and uh, BMW in Auto Alley uh, in Quezon City, Eton Centers. What we launched just today is the all-new M8 from GAC. It is our premium luxury MPV in the market. With, I were to highlight all the features, it will take me until the end of the day to light it up. From the tech, the 14.3-inch screen, the dual panoramic sunroof, chairs with massage function, three fragrance settings inside. And this is just to name a few of what you have in the M8. Everything else you want to expect in a premium luxury MPV, it has, and more. So the engine of the M8 is a very powerful 2.0 turbo gasoline engine with the output of 248 PS and 400 Nm of torque. So we are actually introducing two variants in the country. The first is the GL Master. This is the entry. Uh, it's at sub 3 million, so 2 million 998. And the top of the line is the GX Master, which is at 3 million 948. Unang bumungad sa akin. Ay yung napakagandang exterior niya, di ba? Very, very massive grill. I think it looks very, very elegant. And of course, mahalaga kasi yung, yung functionality niya, yung, yung usage niya para sa akin, especially in, in my line of work. Pagpasok ko sa loob, first thing I tested was the, uh, were the seats. Automatically, talagang kitang-kita mo na uh, with its very advanced technology, kaya niya mag-recline to a certain level na talaga makakapahinga ka dahil, you know, sa trabaho namin, kailangan na kailangan yun. Ngayari, pag mahabang biyahe, pag traffic, pwede kang makahiga ng konti. And, uh, pero siyempre, pinakamahalaga sa lahat, kasyang-kasya yung pamilya ko sa loob na ito. I'd like to invite everyone to come and visit our GAC showrooms. We are nationwide, Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. There is a GAC dealership near you to check out the all-new GAC M8 and our other vehicles where we have also the MPOW, the MCU, the GS8, as well as the MZOOM. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We should take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Make all the difference. Don't put up a fight. Make your own decision. Next Gen Ford Territory. Own the moment. Hello, I'm Johan Tiu from Sonax Philippines. We are at LG2 e Rodriguez and we will be showcasing our new DIY line, the what we call the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax.
So our final ceramic series product is called the Ceramic Spray Coating. This is our most powerful DIY ceramic spray product. Why? Because this can give you up to four months of ceramic coating protection. So application is very easy. Just spray on the microfiber cloth again and wipe it on the area that you want to put to apply the spray coating. The ceramic spray coating is the highest performing ceramic series product of Sonax. It'll last up to four months. It will give that extra gloss and extra ceramic protection. You can easily just wipe it on your car. See the hydrophobic effect? The water just runs down the car. So that's how easy it is to apply the Extreme Ceramic Series from Sonax. For more information, you can visit our FB page, which is Sonax Page Official, our IG page, which is also Sonax PH Official, and TikTok page, which is also Sonax PH Official. So it's very easy to find us. Thank you. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category on Head to Head. This Head to Head pits the Honda HRV V Turbo CVT against the Hyundai Creta GLS IVT in a spec to spec comparison. The subcompact SUV segment can be said to be a buyer's market for the multitude of options now available. The options run from budget friendly to premium models, from brands which have been in the country for decades to relative newcomers. Among these options are the Honda HRV V Turbo CVT listed at 1.649 million pesos and the Hyundai Creta GLS IVT listed at 1.388 million pesos. The Honda HRV is 4,385 millimeters long, 1,790 millimeters wide, and 1,590 millimeters tall, with a ground clearance of 181 mm. The Hyundai Creta 1.5 GLS IVT is 4,315 millimeters long, 1,790 millimeters wide, and 1,630 millimeters tall. It comes with a 2,610 millimeter long wheelbase and a minimum ground clearance of 200 millimeters. The Honda HRV V Turbo features all LED headlights with an auto on off function, daytime running lights, tail lights with light bar, high mount stop lamp, projector type fog lamps, side turn signal lights integrated in the side door mirrors, shark fit antenna, tailgate spoiler, and rear intermittent wipers with washer. Other distinguishing features include bumper with an amp up line, black mesh type grille, platinum headlight extension, dual tailpipe finishers, the turbo emblem and 17-inch gray alloy wheels wrapped by 21560R1796H tires. The Creta features 3D panoramic dual pattern grille, four multifaceted reflector LED headlights with auto light control, LED daytime running lights, and two-tone paint job. It also features halogen repeater lights, power folding and adjusting outside door mirrors with repeaters, chrome outside door handles, LED rear combination lights, front and rear wipers, rear spoiler with high mounts top lamp as well as two-tone 17-inch diamond cut alloy wheels wrapped by 60 series tires. Honda equipped the HRV V Turbo CVT with smart keyless entry with one push start system. The cabin features black and silver accents and leather upholstered seats and shift knob. The driver's seat slides, reclines and adjusts for height. The front passenger seat slides and reclines. The second row features Honda's patented ULT seating which splits and folds flat 60-40 and comes with a rear armrest. The leather-wrapped steering wheel tilts and telescopes and features controls for audio, the HFT, and the multi-information display. The instrument panel comes with a 7-inch digital display. Other comfort and convenience features include power windows and door locks, auto power folding door mirrors, single-zone automatic air conditioning with new air diffusion system and rear air vents, electronic parking brake, ambient cabin lighting, four grab rails, four bottle holders, four cup holders, 12-volt accessory socket, sun visors with illuminated mirrors, map lights, cargo area lights, to no cover, auto-dimming rear-view mirrors, and two rear USB charging ports. 
Hyundai has equipped the Philippine Spec Creta with much of the comfort and convenience features buyers now expect in crossovers in the million peso range. All three variants come with power windows, power door locks, power side mirrors, multiple cup holders on doors, USB charging parts in front tray and console. All have air conditioning but only the top-end GLS IVT has auto temperature control, as well as a glove box with cooling function. The 1.5 GLS and GL IVT come with smart key and button start system. With either digital or conventional instrument cluster, the Creta Dash looks modern and sporty. The HRV Turbo infotainment system uses an 8-inch touchscreen system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, hands-free telephone, audio streaming, USB input, and six speakers. The Hyundai Creta GLS IVT infotainment system features an 8-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, USB connection, Bluetooth with customizable voice recognition function, as well as wireless charging. The top-of-line Honda HR-V is powered by a turbocharged 1498cc four-cylinder VTEC engine that generates 177 PS and 240 Nm of torque made it to a continuously variable transmission that drives the front wheels. The HRV uses McPherson's struts in front and axle type suspension in the rear. It comes with an all wheel disc brake system ventilated in front. The Hyundai Creta is powered by a SmartStream G1.5 engine. The 1497cc DOHC gasoline engine generates 113 horsepower and 144 Nm of torque, sent to the front wheels via an IVT or intelligent variable transmission. The powertrain comes with four drive modes on the top of the light Creta. Eco, Normal, Smart, and Sport. The Creta suspension system features front McPherson struts and a CTBA or coupled torsion beam axle type suspension in the rear. The brake system uses discs on all wheels, 15 inch discs in front, and 14 inch discs in the rear. The HRV comes standard with Honda Sensing, a suite of driver assist technology that includes collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control with low speed follow lane keeping assist system, road departure mitigation system with lane departure warning, auto high beam and lead car departure notification system. It also comes with an anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, vehicle stability assist, hill descent control, hill start assist, auto brake hold, and agile handling assist, as well as a multi-view rear camera. Standard for safety are three-point ELR seat belts with reminder for five, front and side airbags, speed sensing door locks, and ISOFIX child seat anchors. Hyundai equipped all Creta variants brought into the local market with dual airbags, anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control, hill start assist control, parking distance warning sensors, child seat anchors, as well as electric parking brake with auto hold. The 1.5 GL IVT also comes with manual speed limit assist, lane following assist, tire pressure monitoring system, rear view monitor, rear seat alert, blind spot collision avoidance system, lane keeping assist, forward collision avoidance assist, high beam assist and driver attention warning. Knowing the listed prices and the specs, which would you rather have, the HRV or the Creta? Are you into grassroots racing, slaloms, autocross, time attacks, and circuit racing? Do you like to keep your daily ride in tip-top condition? Do you want to improve the performance and ride of your vehicle? Then head over to Fix Stop Auto Service along 91 Congressional Avenue, Project 8 in Kazan City. Fix Stop Auto Service can level up the performance and ride of your daily rider weekend racer of all brands, models, and makes, from Japanese, American, European, and all other global manufacturers. Fix Stop Auto Service offers preventive maintenance services as well as upgrades of brakes, suspension, and other mechanical works. 
Fix Stop also caters to all your needs for performance tires and accessories to make your dream vehicle stand out on the road or for just your enjoyment. For appointments, call 0917-803-8283 or message us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash fixstopautoservice. Zoom UX. Take the lead. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Kia Philippines invited members of media to a ride and drive event to the Old Grove Farmstead in Lipa, Batangas to test the newly launched Celtos in this special feature. We're here at the Old Grove Farmstead outside Lipapa Tangas to celebrate with the media the launch of the Kia Seltos. This is a, an excellent opportunity for us to continue revealing what we feel is an amazing portfolio within Kia. This is a portfolio that has an offer for models for a variety of different customers. The Seltos to us is an excellent example of the ICE offerings that the Kia uh, brand has. We think it's particularly important to be in a location like here in Batangas because it really gives the consumer a sense of what the drive feels like along the highways, along different kinds of terrain, and to really experience uh, the model for themselves. This is going to be a flagship uh, component of the Kia portfolio. We think this is a uh, model that will resonate broad throughout the country. And this will be one component of what we think is a very exciting portfolio for the consumers for Kia in the Philippines. This is the fifth year anniversary with the Ayala AC Motors and the Kia brand. It's an exciting uh, milestone for us. We feel that uh, we're really just getting started. Uh, this is a brand that has really resonated with the Philippine community locally, and we're looking forward at, at what near, uh, the next years could bring for the partnership. <music> Kia is a very unique OEM in that they champion innovation. They want to ensure that their technologies are available to a variety of different customer segments. It's very rare that you have a brand that has an offering in ICEs, hybrids, and EVs as competitively as Kia. I call on all of you consumers to come try this new vehicle, to test it out for yourselves and really see the value that the Kia brand can bring you. AC Motors is quite happy with its partnership with Kia and looks forward to more exciting ride and drive events in the future. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. This edition of Car Review takes a look at the Mini Countryman Cooper S. The Mini S carve a niche all on its own with an iconic design which has never strayed far from the first Mark I Mini rolled out back in 1959. To this day, there's no mistaking a Mini from any angle seen on the road. 
This is certainly true with the Mini Countryman Cooper S, even though at around 4,297mm long, 1,822mm wide, and 1,557mm tall, it is by far the largest of the Minis. The five-passenger, five-door Countryman was rolled out to carve a niche of its own in the now popular SUV crossover segment, arriving as an SAV or Sport Activity Vehicle that can be both at home in the city, the countryside, or even off-road trails. While staying true to its mini heritage, mainly in its proportions and overall look, the new Countryman follows a new distinct robust go-anywhere styling. The new black radiator grille is particularly distinctive with the red S for the Countryman Cooper S. Also distinctive are the asymmetrically rounded LED headlamps outlined by a continuous band of light that serve both as a daylight running light and turn indicators. The Mini Countryman also comes standard with front and rear LED fog lamps, with light band on the upper semicircle serving as the park lights. Serving to remind about the rich British heritage of the Mini Countryman are the upright rear chrome framed LED lights with the Union Jack motive. The roof and side mirrors of the Mini get the piano black treatment. Also getting the black gloss finish are the headlight surrounds, rear light, radiator grille, side turn indicators, and door handles. The Countryman Cooper S also comes with standard 19-inch turn style spoke two-tone light alloy wheel strap by Run Flat Tires. In all four trim, the Countryman Cooper S also features chrome-plated tailpipes and roof rails. Interior appointments have also been upgraded and updated in the new Mini Countryman Cooper S. Quite distinctive is the 8.8-inch color touchscreen display for what Mini calls the Connective Navigation Plus located in the circular panel in the center of the dashboard, featuring high-gloss piano black surfaces. The system comes with wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless charger from mobile phones, and a second USB socket. The 5-inch digital instrument display is found behind the steering wheel in a round black panel. The Mini Countryman now comes standard with front and rear park distance control as well as park assist. The Minis have also been characterized by having surprisingly roomy interior space for passenger and luggage. The Mini Countryman continues this tradition and comes standard with electrically adjustable seats for driver and front seat passenger, with driver also benefiting from memory function. There's room for three adults in the second row seats, which can split and folded 40-20-40 to enlarge the rear storage space from 450 liters to 1390 liters. It comes in 12 ambient lighting colors that should suit various moods. The Countryman Cooper S is powered by a 1998cc gasoline engine with a mini twin power turbo technology generating 192 horsepower from 5000 to 5500 rpm and maximum torque of 280 Nm from 1350 to 4600 rpm. The engine is made into a 7 speed Steptronic double clutch sport transmission. Mini says that Countryman Cooper S can accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in an impressive 7.5 seconds and attain a top speed of around 226 km per hour. As with all minis, the suspension settings of the Countryman Cooper S have been tweaked to ensure firm road holding without compromising on comfort. The driver can also, at the touch of the button, switch from mid, green, and sport driving modes, changing steering and accelerator settings depending on mood or road conditions. All in all, the Mini Countryman Cooper S is a fun, practical, and stylish vehicle for daily driving and weekend getaways. The Countryman is the most popular Mini model representing a third of global Mini sales. It should find a good niche for itself in the local premium compact SUV crossover market. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Okay, now we're going to talk about handling. And by handling, I don't mean race car handling, which 99.99% of us will never do anyway. What we're going to be talking about is how the car handles normally on the road. So you can go to YouTube and then there are lots of videos explaining what camber is, what caster is, and all of this stuff. But what we're going to be talking about is a bit more practical. How to know if your car needs alignment or not. And how to check if the alignment shop did a proper and correct job after you have it aligned. So, so if they did a sucky job, you can always tell them that, hey, car's not aligned, it's a back job.
the easiest test that anybody can do, actually you do it unconsciously, you always have one hand on the wheel to keep the car going straight because as you can see here, we're going to go straight. The second that you let go of the steering wheel and we're about to crash into the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know your car needs alignment. And that's also the test after you have your car have alignment done in the alignment shop, you let it go. If it tracks straight, then job's well done. If it doesn't, then back job. Actually for alignment, the biggest factor that they adjust to make the car go straight or not is toe in and toe out. <laughs> not, not camber per se. Camber relates more to how the car turns, which we'll explain in a bit. We're going to explain the terms with actual wheels rather than a diagram because having actual stuff is a lot easier to visualize. The most common that you hear is camber alignment. That simply means labas o pasok yung wheel. So this is negative camber. This is positive camber. Almost all cars now don't have positive camber anymore. A lot of the cars now, when you buy it stock straight from the factory, have a very, very slight negative camber both on the front and in the back why they do this because when you have a car that's negatively cambered and then when you corner the wheels actually straighten out so we're gonna exaggerate it a bit so you have a car that says negative camber like this when you corner weight shifts out the wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on the road and when you turn the other way the same thing happens weight is on this wheel this wheel gets straighter so there's more grip on this one so that's what camber is the next question is hindi ba mapuputput yung gulong ko dahil naka negative camber ako the answer is no <laughs> the amount of camber is very very slight usually a degree is a lot so it's anywhere from half a degree to one degree that's the stock setting of, of almost all cars now uh, there are some rare cars like Mazda 3's have about a degree and a half, sometimes two degrees of negative camber at the back. And by the way, that's what makes the car handle so well because of that extreme negative camber at the back. If you hear, um, hang around with car people often enough, you'll hear na napuput put yung loob ng gulong ko. It's because of if you have too much negative camber like this, only this part is on the ground. This part here does not rub the ground. So the end result is you get inside tire wear, which means it's napuput put sa loob, sa loob. And since you're a cheapskate, you rotate mo na lang yung goma para maputput naman yung labas. <laughs> but as we showed earlier, if your car goes straight or not when you let go of the steering wheel, a lot of it has to do with toe in and toe out. And then for this one, we need to have a shot from above the tire. <laughs> this is toe in. This is toe out. Again, the stock setting is almost always slightly slightly towed in from the factory and it's pretty easy to see if you have an old uh, transformers toy that with one wheel wobbled like that obviously it will not go straight it's wobbled like this it will also not go straight if it's straight like this with very very slightly pointing inward then this will actually go straight when you roll it <laughs> having the opposite of like that this will also go straight but it will be very wiggly so most of the adjustments when you're having a car aligned to go straight is actually the toe in and toe out. The third term that you will hear is caster alignment. Uh, most of the cars now, we don't really adjust this anymore because there's not much to adjust and adjusting it doesn't really affect anything unless you're racing. So let's forget about that one. So the two important things to remember are toe in, toe out and then camber alignment for tire wear. But once again, the best test if your alignment job is great or not, let go of the steering wheel. That advice also same goes for people who install lowering springs. They always ask, do you need an alignment after you install lowering springs or any other suspension work? Same principle goes. Let go of the steering wheel. If your car go runs straight, you don't need an alignment. If it veers left and right at kumakabig, then you need an alignment. That's how handling is done for us normal people 99.99% of the time and that's all what we need to be concerned about. Yes, you can have lowering springs, better shock absorbers, but the thing is for normal people driving on normal roads, handling is how straight your car goes. 
and when you ask it to turn and it turns and it's not malikot it's not all over the road that is handling for the common person <laughs>